number you have dialed has been changed. The new number is... Crazy Sheep! Moo. Hey everybody, this is Kyle. And that's Jeremy. This is Sheep Snacks. And this is the Crazy Sheep World Headquarters. And you are just in time for story time. So, what is our theme for today? The Fluffy Little Puppy. Well, that's our story, but what's our theme? Fluffiness? No. Like today we'll be talking about the fact that God is with us even in the toughest of times. Uh, and what better way to communicate that than through the sweet and heart-grabbing story of the fluffy little puppy. Oh wait, hang on. <sighs> okay, now I'm ready for story time. Okay. There once was a fluffy little puppy that liked to get into all kinds of mischief. Sometimes it was little stuff like eating the cat's food or getting locked in the dishwasher. <laughs> But sometimes a fluffy little puppy got into big time trouble. Uh-oh. Uh, the next like six pages are missing. Well, what? What kind of big time trouble did the fluffy little puppy get into? I don't know. I guess we can just go to the next page and try and fill in the blank spots. Yeah, yeah, do that. The suspense is killing me. Plus, I'm almost out of juice. Okay. The fluffy little puppy looked out from underneath the front porch. She couldn't believe that she was on a kangaroo farm in the middle of New Zealand so far from her family. The fact that she was whisked away and forced to learn French and knit sweaters to be sold in major retail shops around the world was really eating away at her. What a wild and scary four years it had been. <coughs> To find those missing six pages. What in the world happened? I have no idea. All I know that this puppy's in a world of hurt. Well, how did she get out of the New Zealand kangaroo farm and, and the sweater knitting sweatshops? And how's she gonna get back to her family? And she'll never be able to unlearn French. Her whole world's been turned upside down. I hope God's got her back even when things are crazy. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Nancy Newsworthy, and this is your news. We begin with breaking news concerning horrible monsters rising out of the oceans at this very moment and destroying the world. But first, an early look at weather. Thanks, Nancy. Tomorrow's weather is going to be really exciting. The sun is going to rise in the morning at 6.07 and bring lots of tingly sunshine rays to everyone going to work, school, and Pilates classes. But bring an umbrella because we might get some raindrops in the morning caused by this really big swell of lukewarm air over the Pacific Southwest. If it doesn't rain, then it will be dry. That's your weather first forecast for today because you need to know now what's going to happen tomorrow. Back to you, Nancy. Thanks, Noel. And now to our breaking news from our vision reporter, Daniel. Let's go live on the scene. Daniel, tell us what you see. Well, Nancy, it's a strange sight to be sure. The ocean waves are just going crazy and the winds are blowing like mad from every direction. A few minutes ago, I saw a large creature come out of the water that looked like a lion with eagle wings. Daniel? Yes, Nancy? Lions do not have eagle wings. I'm aware of that, Nancy, but it's obvious that something mysterious is going on here. Like a banjo contest, Daniel? No, Nancy, it's nothing like a banjo contest. Wait, okay... Now I'm seeing two other creatures come out of the water. It looks like the first is... Oh, the first is a giant bear and... What's that other one? 
Wow, the third one looks to be some sort of leopard with four wings and four heads. That's incredible, Nancy. What do you make of all this, Daniel? I can't be sure right now so much is happening all at once. But these guys are not happy, that's for sure. Watch out! The bear creature just ate a hot dog stand, Nancy. That reminds me, I need to get mustard on the way home tonight. Good grief, Nancy, I can't believe what I'm seeing. A fourth creature is coming out of the water and it's even scarier looking than all the others. And Daniel, we'll check back with you in a moment. Right now, I'm joined in studio by two guests who are experts in the field of animals with more than one head. Thanks for joining us, Dr. Told you and Dr. So. Tell us, what does all this mean? Well, Nancy, first, let me tell your viewers that I explain all of these events in my latest book, Counting Heads, Understanding Freaky Visions and World Events. You can buy it from my website. Can I share the web address with your audience? I'd prefer if you didn't. Okay. Dr. So, does any of this make sense to you? Nancy, it makes sense in the fact that we know sin and evil are all over the world. Yes, Dr. So, but multi-headed leopards with four wings are not all over the world. No, of course not. But sometimes images are more powerful than just words. What Daniel is seeing is a metaphor. He's seeing images that explain divine truth. I have no idea what you just said. Let's go to sports. <coughs> Apparently, it's a slow day in sports. Okay, I'm told that Daniel has more to report. Daniel, what's happening now? Nancy, I'm not sure if you could see this or not, but the Ancient One has arrived wearing all white and riding some sort of vehicle with wheels of blazing fire. Ooh, sounds like my high school prom date. I can assure you it is not your prom date, Nancy. This guy has millions of angels following him around and helping him out. He's amazing. He's way more powerful than those other creatures. Oh! He destroyed the fourth creature, Nancy. That beast is toast. The ancient dude is intense. He's definitely my favorite. Okay, doctors. Now we have the ancient one flexing his muscles and taking care of business. What's going on? It's really simple, Nancy. The world's going to end October 11th, 1981. Doctor told you that was like 20. Eight years ago. Oh, yes, of course. I meant to say that Jesus is going to return and take control of the earth in June 1979. That was 30 years ago. That's more inaccurate than your first date. January 1994? I don't think so. 1998? No. 1965. Do you even know how to read, Doctor? It's today! Run! Panic! It's all ending today! Dr. So, can you give us any guidance? Well, I think so. First, we have to remember that the overall purpose of these visions is to show us that God is ultimately more powerful and more amazing than anything in the universe. I feel ya. So, the weird and scary creatures make it clear to us that sin and evil are really here on Earth and are extremely dangerous. Sin can destroy lives. Ah, it's all over! But... Daniel's vision also makes it very clear that God will totally destroy evil. God is going to win. I like the sound of that. And I like the sound of Daniel's smooth, silky voice. Daniel, any new updates? Actually, yes, a lot is happening right now. Someone that looks like a man has come down from the clouds and it looks like the Ancient One has given him authority, honor, and power over the whole world. This is incredibly exciting, Nancy. Well, since things seem to be slowing down, let's check back in with Noel for our final weather update. Check this out, Nancy. That's a vision I won't soon forget. Wow, now I'm seeing a goat flying around without even touching the ground. Save it for the morning news, Daniel. It's time to wrap this up. Okay, I've got it this time. The flying goat gave it away. It's all going to end February 1947. It won't be long now. Thanks for joining us tonight. Tune in next time for more from our award-winning vision reporter, Daniel. Good night. 2000. It's all over in 2000. You should really get a hobby, Doctor told you. Want to get some coffee, Doctor So? Sounds like God is ultimately in control. That's good news for us and the fluffy little puppy. Speaking of the fluffy little puppy, I found those missing six pages. They'd been stuffed in the back. Ooh, yeah. So what happened? Oh, uh, turns out it was all a dream. The real story hadn't even started yet. Well, that seems kind of convenient for our plot line. Very. Hmm. So will you keep reading? Of course. I want to know what happens to the fluffy little puppy as much as you do. All right. <clears throat> 
The fluffy little puppy was on her way to pick up her little brother from viola lessons when she happened upon a grizzled old fence with a grizzled old dog inside. The grizzled old dog said, Hey, you fluffy little puppy, what makes you so special? Um, nothing, said the fluffy little puppy, but I'm on my way to pick up my little brother from viola lessons and I don't want to be late. Just then, the grizzled old dog reached over and grabbed the fluffy little puppy. She was pulled inside the grizzled old fence and found herself in the company of a very mean dog. You see, said the fluffy little puppy, my mom asked me to get my little brother, and I really want to do what she asked. If I stay here inside this grizzled old fence, I won't be able to finish the job. Oh, quiet down, said the grizzled old dog. I don't like you, you know. You're too little and fluffy. This is getting scary. That grizzled old dog reminds me of my Uncle Purdy's dog, Zelda. Yeah, and now the fluffy little puppy's in a really tough spot. I mean, I know God is going to win like we saw in the last snack, but I still can't help but be a little scared for the fluffy little puppy. I mean, like I'm worried about how she's going to get out of the fence and what's going to happen to the grizzled old dog. You know, this reminds me of another story. Bring in the Play-Doh! Play-Doh? Okay, Silas, are you ready for a big day of telling the story of Jesus? You bet, Paul. I'm ready. I made some brand new signs for us to use even. How about we skip the signs this time? Thanks for making them, though. No problem. Want me to get the megaphone or trench coat or wooden box for you to stand on? Actually, let's get the day started with prayer. I think we're going to need it. These men serve God and they're telling you how to be saved! Why are you screaming? I didn't say anything! Weird. These men serve God and they're telling you how to be saved! There it was again! It was her! These men serve God and are telling you how to be saved! Hello there, are you talking about us? These men serve God and are telling you how to be saved! Good grief! We heard you the first three times. What is your name? These men serve God and are telling you how to be saved! <laughs> this is funny! I had a stuffed bear once that kept saying the same thing over and over again and my mom said it was because it was broken, but my dad said it was because my mom bought it on sale and I think it's just because I loved it so much and I played with it over and over and over and over and over and over Silas, I get it, but this isn't funny. These men serve God and are telling you how to be saved! It's a little funny. In the name of Jesus, I command you to come out of her. Wow, that was awesome, Paul! Wow, thanks a bunch, guys. That spirit that was controlling me was really starting to get on my nerves. You and me both, lady. My master isn't going to be happy with you. That spirit's made him a lot of money predicting the future. That's okay. We'll take our chances. Besides, what's he gonna do? Have us thrown in jail? This stinks! They took all my signs! Don't worry, you'll get a chance to make more. I can't believe they threw us in jail for helping that lady. Our tax dollars at work, Silas. Get used to it. Jail is boring. Let's play charades! I was thinking of singing some old hymns. We'll do it after charades, okay? Then sings my soul, my savior God to the Okay, end. okay, I'll start. That was great! I love charades! Now let's sing. When I survey the wondrous cross... Hey, hey! Hey, I bet I could totally squeeze through these bars and bust us out of here! I'm not sure that's a good idea. Why don't you just wait until... No, no, no! It'll be simple! I think I am stuck. Simple, huh? I need a doctor! My head is killing me! Are you kidding me? I tried to warn you. What happened? Prison break? Prison break? Call the police! Wait, I'm the police. Oh, great! I've got to fire myself! Hey, buddy, it's okay. We aren't escaping. What? Why not? I am hungry! It's not time to leave yet. 
but there's a 24-hour hot dog hut right down the street. I could be back in eight minutes. Not yet, Silas. Fine. But did you know they took my signs? I can't believe this. God must have done this because that guy's definitely not strong enough to bust these prison bars. Yes, you Hey! Your God must be amazing. Tell me, what do I have to do to be saved? I want to be a follower of God. Oh, I see, Paul. This is why we stuck around. You got it, Silas. Now let's talk to this guy and his family about Jesus, and then maybe we can hit the hot dog hut. Want me to get the megaphone? No, Silas. A megaphone will not be needed. But I have a feeling we will need some water pretty soon. You know, Joaquim, that Paul was a smart guy. You said it, sheep! Not only did he trust God to take care of him in any situation, he was always looking for opportunities to share the love of the shepherd with people. I hope the fluffy little puppy can do the same. Are you crazy, sheep? That puppy is doomed! There's no way she makes it out of that grizzled old situation behind that grizzled old fence! Um, Joaquim, what's the Wally Joiner doing? Gotta get limber! Gotta get loose! Gotta stay focused! Focused! There's no telling with him. Hey, fellas! Where's Wally Joyner at? Oh, hey, Kevin. Hey, Kevin's muscles. <laughs> Wally Joyner is just over there getting limber and loose. But we have no idea why. He sent me an email. Said he wanted me to come over so we could arm wrestle. Kentucky Bluegrass. He's gonna arm wrestle you? That's what the email said. And I said, hey, what else am I doing? So I moved my manicure back to tomorrow when I came over here. Uh. Wally Joyner, you crazy? You can't arm wrestle Kevin. You need your arms. Look at the verse today. Philippians 4.13. Wally Joyner, there's a whole video about that verse that we're getting ready to watch. So just wait, and then yeah, we'll- Yeah, come on, Wally Joyner, I can beat you with arm wrestling anytime. Let's watch. All right, but I'm feeling strong. The streets, the streets, taking it to the streets, where Jeremy and Kyle talk to people on uh, the, the streets. Taking it to the streets. Hey everybody, normally we open this segment by kind of talking about what we're going to be doing on the show today. Like today we were going to talk about Philippians 4.13 and we were going to interview people here out on the streets and ask them to tell us about tough times that they've lived through by depending on the power of Jesus. But when I got to the Crazy Sheep headquarters this morning, Kyle was gone. He was nowhere to be found. Now, I was a little bit late because my leg got stuck in a washing machine, but, you know, that's a long story. So anyway, I just figured that Kyle got tired of waiting for me and just came down here to the, to the streets without me. But then I found the camera, and I was checking it out to make sure it was working. And here, I check, look what I found on the tape inside the camera. Here, watch this. All right, is this thing working? Okay. All right, guys, I couldn't even wait for Jeremy to get started on today's episode because I just finally read the verse, and you know what it says? It says, in Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. All things, anything through Christ. I didn't know it said that. It's been there the whole time. I can do anything through Christ. There's so much I've always wanted to do, and I've never even tried it because I didn't know you could do all things or anything through Christ. Man, I don't even know where to start. I mean, there's so much I want to do. You know what? I've always wanted to do radical bike tricks, so I'm going to go try to jump over a car with my bicycle. Wish me luck. I can do all things. I can't believe it. Yeah, you see why I'm worried? I mean, Kyle just learned to ride a bike like two weeks ago, and that was with training wheels. I mean, he's really going to get hurt if he tries to jump a car. He could break his leg, or worse, he could break his esophagus. Besides, that's not even what Philippians 4.13 means, but... We don't have time to talk about that now. We've got to find Kyle. Come on, let's go. All right. He's got to be around here somewhere. Uh, 
Um, I can do all things! No, 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 you can't, Kyle! I can do all things! Come on! I can't carry this camera. I have to sit it down while I, while I chase him. Okay, dude. Are you okay? I think so. I can still feel my esophagus, so that's good, right? What in the world were you thinking, dude? I can do all things. Didn't you read Philippians 4:13? Well, yeah, but that's not what it means. It's talking about living through hard times. Maybe I should try something a little easier. Ah. Oh. Okay, everyone, listen here. I don't want to hear about anyone jumping cars on their bicycles because of Philippians 4.13. That is not what Paul meant when he talked about doing all things. Dude, it's I'm going to go juggle some fire. Ha! <laughs> I can do all things! All right, all right, man. So, before Paul wrote verse 13, he was talking about how he had learned to be content in any situation. Did he just say he was going to go juggle fire? What could go wrong, dude, all right? The bike thing, that was a test of faith, all right? But juggling fire sticks, come on, that's a sure bet. Besides, I've always wanted to do this. Uh, do I really have to convince you that throwing flaming sticks of fire above your head is a bad idea? You worry too much, all right? Read Philippians 4, 6. Yeah, and you read Philippians 4, 13 and what comes before it. It'll help you understand what he means by saying he can do all things. smell something burning? Yeah, like those flaming sticks of fire you're about to throw over your head? No, it's something different than that. It's... It's... Oh, I don't smell anything. Why do my... pants feel hot? <laughs> Kyle just caught his bum on fire. Philippians 4.13. I guess I should go get some water. Okay. Uh, I have no idea where Kyle is. I can't find him. So I'm just going to have to wrap this up by myself. Uh, Philippians 4.13 is just basically, it's given us hope and encouragement that no matter what happens to us, we can make it through. We can endure. It's not telling us that we can actually do anything. Uh, for example, my, my grandma is never going to play professional football. And my... She could, though. I mean, she's pretty strong. What in the world are you doing in a dumpster? And when did you arm wrestle my grandma? Yeah, the dumpster's a funny story. Uh, I thought this afternoon it'd be nice to go out and give complete strangers nice relaxing massages. You're joking, right? No, man, it'd be awesome. Like, you go up to a total stranger and they've had a real stressful day and you give them a nice massage, you know, take their stresses away. Uh, the last time you gave your Aunt Judith a massage, the poor lady couldn't stand up straight for three days. Yeah, but that was before I'd read Philippians 4.13, all right? Now I saw that, like, the fire thing didn't work out, you know, so I thought I'd do the massage thing, but then, like, I don't... And it didn't go well. Look, I have it all on video, all right? Just watch it. All right, this is totally going to work, okay? Since I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength, I thought I'd find a stranger that really needs it today and give him a nice, relaxing massage. Won't that be nice? Let's see. Let's search the streets and see if we can... Oh, this guy looks kind of stressed, kind of in a hurry. Let's see. Excuse me, sir? Sir, have you got just a second? Uh, not really, no. Well, I, it'll be really fast. I just want to give you a nice, relaxing massage. I don't really want a nice, relaxing massage. Well, sir, it, like I said, it'll be really quick, and you'll be surprised at how much better you feel once I'm finished, sir. I don't think I, that would make me feel any no, better. No, really, just I, let your stress melt away at my fingertips, sir. I don't want to melt away at your fingertips. Sir, I've got scented candles back. Like, I mean, it's it really is. Dude, seriously. I, just, look, sir. Hey, if, you just you need just, to get your hands get, off of me. Ah!
Wow. Yeah. So what is it you were saying about Philippians 4.13? Oh, yeah. Um, right. Well, when Paul wrote that, he had just been thrown in jail. He had just been beaten up. He had gone hungry. And so he was trying to tell his people that no matter what was happening to him, no matter what he had or what he didn't have, that he had learned to be content in any situation. And he just wanted them to know, to know that no matter what was happening to them, they could live through it. They could endure. They could do it. So he was not saying, I could jump over a car with my bike, juggle fire sticks, or invade the personal space of total strangers. That is correct. Bummer. But Philippians 4.13 does give us hope that even when you're having a really, really, really bad day, that you can make it through it. With God's strength, you can endure. We can do it. Huh. Well, that's good news. My bum hurts. Yeah. Okay, I can't take it anymore. I have got to find out what happens to the fluffy little puppy. Like, does she get out from behind the fence? Is she be able to go pick up her brother from viola lessons? Yeah, I, I'm ready to find out too. Let's keep reading. Uh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. What? What happened? Did something bad happen? The next few pages are missing. Uh, what? Good grief. Our library really needs like a quality control department. I'm writing a letter. So do we have any idea what happened to the fluffy little puppy? I have the very last page. Hmm. Uh, it seems the puppy escaped the fence. Yay! And the grizzled mean old dog is now a well-groomed kind old dog. <gasps> Yay! But the puppy was late for picking up her little brother from viola lessons. No! The humanity! This was supposed to be a story with a happy ending. Yeah, well, we know that God's in control, but that doesn't mean that things are always going to turn out exactly like we want them to. <sighs> That's true, but God is always with us. He walks right next to us when times are tough and scary. Yeah, He's totally got our backs. So, talk about a time that was tough in your life. Like, what made it tough and how were you able to get through it? How did God reveal himself to you in that situation? Yeah, and talk about ways that you can show God's love by getting involved in other people's tough situations. Maybe your family or friends are going through rough times. How can you get involved and make God the star? You know what we should do? Hmm. We should read the sequel. The fluffy little puppy gets a job at Sealand. Oh, sounds like it's got potential. Oh, yeah. What do you think? asked the fluffy little puppy. I don't know, answered the guy in the whale costume. I've never had to pull a tooth from a live walrus before. <gasps> well, said the puppy, it's really hurting him. It has to come out. Do you know any good walrus dentists? asked the guy in the whale costume. My uncle makes dentures for aging parrots. That's the closest thing I've got, said the puppy. Let's find a payphone and give him a call, said the guy.